Hello traders, this is Corey Mitchell. I want to talk about the snapback strategy for day trading the Euro USD. I don't know how these patterns work on other time frames. I only use specific patterns when I day trade the Euro USD and I day trade on a one minute chart. So if you trade other time frames, I have no idea how this is going to work for you. But if you trade on the Euro USD, I'll show you how I trade this pattern. And so I have a few of my charts up and we're just going to go through some recent days. This isn't a strategy that produces a ton of trades in the last 20 trading days, which is about one month worth of trading. We had eight trades of these, but the win rate was very high. And so you're looking at basically getting about one of these trades every couple days or so. But sometimes, depending if there's really strong market moves, as you'll see in one of these examples, you might get three or four in a day. And I typically only trade for about a two hour window, two hours to two and a half hours. So these are mountain standard time. If you were in Eastern time, each one of these times would be kicked forward a couple hours. So I'm starting at 6.15 to 6.30. Mountain time, that'd be about six, uh, 8.15 to 8.30 Eastern time or New York time. Uh, just so you're aware of which uh, time frame I'm using here. And so when I say they produced eight patterns in 20 days, that's during my time frame. That's during this two hour window between just after when US opens and a couple hours in. And we do get some patterns outside of that, obviously. We probably get some during the London session. But I'm really, since my focus is on this period, even these strategies, I can't guarantee they work outside of this, well, I can't guarantee they'll work for you, period. But I trade them, I trade them well, and but I don't know how they perform outside of these hours. So if you're trading different hours, different time frames, different currency pairs, you would definitely want to check to make sure that this pattern still holds and still works well on whatever you're doing. So let's look at the basic one here. So this actually occurred just after I had finished trading, so it wasn't counted in my uh, daily profit. Uh, we have a couple other strategies here. I'll get to those. These are rounded bottoms, rounded tops, and I'll talk about how to trade those in another video. But for now, let's focus on this snapback strategy. So a snapback is can only go in the trend direction. So we have a sharp move in the trend direction. We've already been moving in a trend direction, or this sharp move could change. So if this uh, was maybe just oscillating around and we have a really sharp drop, that would also count. But we really need to have a dominant move that shows we're moving in a specific direction. So we have this really big drop. Then we also need a sharp reversal. So we have this pullback, which is quite aggressive. It's not just meandering up. It snaps up. And that's why I called it the snapback. So what we end up with is a really hard snap to the upside, which then snaps just as hard right back to the downside. And what we're looking for then is at least two bars where the price, uh, it doesn't have to move specifically sideways, but we want it to at least stall out. So we had this really strong down move and then it needs to you know, oscillate uh, or not move aggressively for two price bars. So we get that right here, one bar, two bars. So now we are looking for a break below the low of those two candles in this case because we're moving down and then we pop up a little bit here that's okay we're still near the bottom of this nothing has really changed and what I'm looking for is the shift back to the downside because we know or at least I know from the researching this pattern that we're likely to continue lower so I want to get in once I start seeing that shift. So the ori originally I was looking for an entry point down here. I can definitely keep that there and put the stop loss just above here. Uh, this stop loss level should be whatever your spread is. Uh, mine's quite small, pretty much close to zero. But whatever yours is, you should have about 0.1 pips plus the spread. So uh, if you have you know a 0.2 or 0.3 pip spread, your stop loss would be just slightly above this high and then I'm looking for that shift so as soon as we have this green bar up and then we drop back below it I was willing to take this short 
and I use a 2.5 to 1 reward to risk, meaning if I'm risking, let's just say this is a 5 pip stop loss, my target's going to be 12.5 pips. Uh, 5 pips is getting really big for a stop loss. This one uh, is getting close, but we did have a lot of movement on this day, so I was okay with that. If it's a not a lot of movement day, you're probably going to keep, going to keep that stop loss to about 4 pips or less. If you get a really big... Uh, if you're gonna have to take a trade that has a big stop loss on it, uh, usually I'll just avoid those ones because it's not uh, quite as likely that that target's gonna get hit because the bigger your stop loss is, now you multiply that by 2.5, the further the price has to run. So this one had a little bit extra left after it, but not a whole lot. So if I got in late on this one and entered down here and my stop loss had to go up here, my profit target wouldn't have been hit. So that's the basic example. You can also think of it as it looks like an H, kind of a, a weird kids drawing H where we have a, a drop, a pop, drop right back, consolidates, and then drops out the bottom. So let's look at this day. This day had was one of those days where we had quite a few. And so this made up three of the uh, trades in the last 20 days. And we have, here's the sharp drop. And we do have a little bit of a hiccup in there, but we can still see very aggressive selling. We have, uh, this one isn't too aggressive. Uh, oh, and on this one, we have no stall out near the low. It just kind of drops. Uh, and then even if we viewed this as a stall out, it didn't drop below it right away. So I viewed this whole thing as the drop. Then we have the H. This one's not too big, but you can definitely see a nice little pop up there and then it drops and here's our drop back so we're looking at one two this one does move up but again I I don't like pigeonholing myself too much and saying you know exactly this has to happen because the markets are so dynamic that we're gonna see slight variations all the time so what I'm really looking for is that after we've seen that drop back to the bottom assuming we don't have a huge rally and then the price goes back above uh, the top of this little hump on the H then I'm willing to take that trade once we see that shift to the downside so this one a little bit I'd say more of an advanced type trade the next one's a little bit more classic and then we have the drop the hump on the H drops right back one two we know that we're gonna drop at worst we're gonna get in down here but we have a little pop up. So as soon as we kind of take out the lows of this green bar here, I was willing to say, okay, I'm jumping in. And a little bit extra there. And if you're willing to hold through a pullback, then that gives you more room. So, um, you know, on this one, hit the target right away. On this one, it hit the target right away. But let's say our st target had been a little bit further out then we may have had to hold through some choppiness and I've just going through all my trades I have to do this all the time because I have a strong tendency to want to get out of trades and think that I can trade better than my systems by you know if this starts to move up on me I'll I have a tendency to want to get out of that trade so regularly I'll go through my trades and add up what would my profit have been if I had gotten out of some of these trades? What would my profit be if I held them? And all the time, it is the more profitable thing for at least my strategies and the way I trade has been to hold the trades regardless of what they do. Uh, the only time I get out early is when there is major news, high impact news, or I get a valid pattern going the other way, which I would trade. Uh, and that doesn't happen too often. So this, uh, yes, yeah, so we just go from one right into the other. First one, and then now this drop forms our next H. There you can see the H there, big drop. And then we just have another one right there. Drops in, we get the pause. This one moves up a little bit and we get the pause a tiny bit higher up above here. So at this point, there's no reason to wait for the price to drop below this low point. You could but then you'd have to put a stop loss up here that makes it unnecessarily large. And once we get this little pop up, now we've had two bars moving sideways. Once we drop below that point, 
we can enter the short stop loss just above the high uh, of this little recent swing. So we're catching this as it's dropping and then our stop loss is going above. As this is happening, you can take your measure tool on MetaTrader or whatever and just measure how much this is. Uh, on MetaTrader, you can just right click or uh, uh, left click and hold and it'll show you how many pips. On TradingView, there's a little measuring tool along the side and you can just click the measuring tool, click here, click here, see, okay, this is three pips. Add a little bit for your spread so that your stop loss goes just above this high. And before this trade's even entered, you know what your stop loss is, so you can punch it in. Stop loss is four pips and target is 10 pips or however you wanna work it. Uh, like I said, I'm using a 2.5 to one reward to risk. Let's look at another example. And this one, we have sharp move up. So again, a, a different trade here, rounded bottom. And sharp move up, little pullback. And we have one two bar pause there. And I was looking to go long right above here. So this one did not work out. This was a losing trade and broke down. This was one of the few losers over the last month. So it's been quite good, but you're, nothing works all the time. Here, big H, strong, strong drop, nice sharp rally, and a drop. This one, as you can see, is a little bit bigger than some of the other patterns. I, in my trading plan, all these patterns that I've traded have been between about 10 and 16 minutes. If it's like a minute off or so, that's okay. But from this point here, the bottom of the H, uh, we should have, um, this should take about 10 minutes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 minutes. So we're right in that ballpark. We're a tiny bit over, but like I said, I, I don't want to get too exact because there's slight variation always. So if a pattern takes 15 minutes or 16 minutes, uh, I'm not gonna not trade a pattern because of that. But if we're talking about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, then I'm not gonna trade this pattern from this point because it's just moving too slowly. Here we can see, even though this pattern takes a little bit longer, it is a little bit bigger, we can still see sharp movement and pretty sharp movement. Uh, so this still fits my parameters of trading this. We have a little hiccup in here, that's okay. Overall, sharp movement right back to the downside. We get to the bottom, one, two bars moving sideways once we break out the low. In this case, we have no wiggles, no moving up, no nothing. We don't have to change anything. We drop below that second low, which is always kind of our worst place or worst case entry point, and we're into that one. This one, you had to hold through some crap because it dropped and came right back up. So if your stop loss was not above this swing high, you may have got stopped out, or there would probably be a strong compulsion when you see this green bar to get out of the trade, I say at minimum hold through one major pullback. Um, but really, I've just decided do not exit trades unless there's news coming out or you have a valid pattern in the opposite direction. And we have no valid patterns going in the opposite direction. We're in an overall downtrend, so we are taking this trade. This one was we had another one right after this. Uh, we have this strong move down, the pop back up right back to the prior low, one, two. Once it drops below that, we're getting into this short trade. In the moment, I wrote this and said, stop loss too big, because we were getting, uh, it just looked a little bit big to me considering the movement we'd had. But if I would have actually measured this, my stop loss would have been about four pips, which is totally fine. Fits all within the strategy parameters. Uh, over five pips is where I start to get a little bit cautious, but even then, if we have lots of movement, I'll be okay with it, assuming that it looks reasonable that my 2.5 to one target could be hit. So this was a valid trade and was a mistake on my part not to take it. So this could have actually been a better day than it was. And again, would have had to hold through some junk. We would have got in here, probably would have got close to the target, but maybe not quite hit it would have had to hold through the balance, but it was eventually hit. So this one, uh, definitely another valid trade to look at. 
And then we also want to watch when the price just doesn't go where we expect. So here we have another one, drop, pop back up, one, two, and then it starts to drift up. We don't really get a strong move below kind of two price bars. So we have two price bars here. Now we have, these are the last two price bars. And then we don't really get a drop below that. And then we just start meandering. And this was after I was done trading as well. So I wasn't even really looking at this, but just to keep in mind, if the price just starts drifting up and we're getting back toward that top of that H, then if the pattern's starting to get too spread out, not really looking like these other ones where it's just drop, drop, pop, drop, consolidate, and that drop doesn't happen really quickly, then that tells us something too. Maybe this trend's running out of steam. And so even though this did have the drop, this one didn't look as compelling to me because we're just kind of drifting up now. And uh, this, yeah, just kind of a quick blip down. Uh, so, like I said, this trade, even if you had taken that one, that's still okay. Overall, the win rate I found, at least for the way I trade it, is fairly good. But depending on which ones you opt to trade, and you may see some that I don't, which is quite possible, and I may see some that you're not seeing, then, you know, your, your own win rate's going to vary. So you want to go through your charts, go through at least maybe the last 20 days, try to see if you can find these patterns on the at the time of day that you trade and write down what the results would have been using maybe a two to one reward to risk, a 2.5 to one reward to risk, and just see how this would have played out for you specifically on which ones you see. And then you can decide if this is a strategy that you wanna start using or not. So that is the snapback strategy. Uh, I'm quite liking it. It doesn't give a ton of trades, like I said, maybe one every couple days. But on the odd day, it gives us two, sometimes three trades and uh, has been working out fairly well for me. So until next time, happy trading.